Hello, dear audience. Thank you very much for in your interest in our paper Topogan, Topology Optimization with Generative Adversarial Networks. Uh, my name is Matthias Bernhardt. I currently work at the University of Pennsylvania and the work I'm going to present was developed with my colleagues at Digital Building Technologies, ETH Zurich, Reza Kakui, Patrick Bedarf and Benjamin Dillenburger. Topology optimization was introduced more than 30 years ago by Benzo and Kikuchi as an analytical method to distribute a certain fraction of material in a large design domain using the finite element method. The remaining material has to fulfill certain boundary conditions like loads and supports while, for example, maximizing the stiffness of the part. However, due to the complexity of the resulting uh, geometries, it wasn't until advances in digital fabrication, especially 3D printing, also made the production of these geometries possible. We see here the now famous example of a node in a bar cable structure developed by Arup in 2014. At the slightly larger scale of furniture, where the product still uh, fits the build space of 3D printers with only a few discretization cuts, there are numerous examples of chairs also, I think, because of their interesting load case. But even before that, in the early 2000s, there were a few examples built at the scale of full buildings, uh, like the Akutagawa Riverside project in Takatsuki, or the Qatar uh, Convention Center uh, by Arata Isosaki and engineer Mutsuru Sasaki. In our paper, we addressed the intermediate scale of an architectural element, as we did for this uh, slab prototype in 2015. The resulting tubular structures are relatively complex, uh, branching in all directions and their production was only possible thanks to large-scale additive manufacturing. Uh, but the process of finding the optimal topology uh, even for simple load cases and not only for 3D uh, but even for 2D is both computationally expensive and time-consuming and uh, currently not embedded in real-time feedback loop during the design, uh, in the design phase. <laughs> Uh, to address the problem of long computation time uh, for a single solution, we were wondering if a machine learning model, more specifically a generative adversarial network, or GAN for short, that was introduced in 2014 by Ian Giswood fellow et al, uh, could support the designer by learning from large amounts of existing solutions. We adapted uh, the special type of GAN known as pix to pix introduced in 2016 by Philip Isola et al, uh, there are two neural networks competing against each other, a generator G, here on the left, that acts like an art forger and tries to come up with realistically looking for a photo of a shoe given a line drawing as an input, and a discriminator D, here on the right, that acts like a detective and tries to distinguish the real photos, the ground truth, uh, from the fake ones generated by G. Uh, in the be beginning, they both know nothing, but after each round of training, both their weights are adjusted to do a little better the next time. And the results in the original paper are very impressive, not only for shoes, but they demonstrate this image translation uh, also from uh, sketches to photos, uh, from maps to satellite images and vice versa, from day to night, summer to winter, and of course, for some hilarious mutations of cats. Instead of shoes or floor slabs, we chose the load-bearing facade walls as the element of investigation. We focused thereby on the architectural design potential of the openings. Uh, because upon a closer look, the windows are not just placed between a grid of supports, but are prominently causing the exceptions that also give this building its characteristic appearance. Enter Topogan, uh, the architect's AI assistant for the schematic design phase. Our object of study is a 3 by 3 meter wall element at the resolution of 23 millimeters. There's a linear vertical load applied along the top edge and a linear support along the bottom edge. What is different in all the examples are the openings. They are different in size, position, shape and number. We wrote a script to generate the inputs on the left, a wall in black uh, with openings in red and a Python implementation of topology optimization to calculate the distribution of 30% area fraction of material. Uh, the preparation of one of these examples took about one minute approximately. 
So in our case, the discriminator D sees these pairs of images, the openings and the resulting optimized topology from the FDA simulation, while the generator G only sees the openings and learns over time to fake a solution that the discriminator cannot tell apart uh, from the real anymore. Uh, these are some of the examples held back uh, during training for testing uh, to see how well it performs. And this is what the generator network learned to predict given just uh, the openings. Uh, to determine whether or not the generator learns something useful, we needed to develop some metrics to measure the performance. And these are fourfold, the visual, by visual inspection, uh, by uh, pixel difference, by constraint violation, and by area fraction. Uh, visual inspection, uh, upon a closer look uh, at the results from a few slides before, it looks generally very similar, uh, with a few minor exceptions like missing, misplaced, or too hesitant horizontal connections. A more quantitative performance measurement is the pixel difference. Uh, we look here at one row uh, of pixels in the ground truth and the same row of pixels in the generated uh, image uh, and the comparison between the two where in red we see missing material where there should be and in blue excess material where there shouldn't be. And we made this for all the image pairs, uh, ground truth and uh, generated images. And we see that in many cases of these tree-like structures, there's just a little bit of offside, offset to one side. The most obvious differences are horizontal and or diagonal connections again. Uh, maybe there was not enough of these examples in the training set uh, to reliably predict their placement. The third uh, performance measurement, the constraint violation, uh, is by counting the number of black pixels that were accidentally placed on the red areas of the input. For almost all the cases, this is zero or just a handful of uh, neglectable uh, pixels. Uh, even though the generator was never explicitly told, the network learned this one admittedly simple rule very well. And fourth, the area fraction. Uh, for the area fraction performance measure, we count the ratio of black pixels uh, to the number of total pixels and compare it with the 30% desired area fraction that was specified in the topology optimization step. And that was even more surprising that even though that, uh, it was never explicitly specified, the generator network gets this right within only a few percent of deviation. And this is more surprising than the constraint violation uh, because this is not per pixel, but uh, has to take into account the entire image. Uh, conventional topology optimization, as I said in the beginning, is precise but relatively slow. Uh, it also took around one minute to prepare one of the training examples. Topogain, as we've uh, seen, may be a bit less precise here and there, but it is way faster. The generator only takes around a tenth of a second to come up with a proposal. And this is maybe a trade-off uh, that is acceptable in early design phases. Uh, but we don't think that it, by any means it would replace conventional finite element analysis and proper, uh, uh, proper simulation. Now, uh, but due to this, thanks to the speed, it can be a game changer when it's implemented, for example, in, in a CAD package. If the designer can move the openings, uh, can scale them, can change their proportions. Or even the distribution of multiple openings and see a proposal for the resulting optimal topology in real time. Now, the error is not binary. There are different levels of severity of constraint violations. Uh, where the red pixel would mean that it got it completely wrong, uh, while if it places, uh, accidentally places some material uh, in the orange pixel, then it is kind of close, uh, not too far off, uh, but it would score just as wrong with the previously presented performance measurements. 
uh, we therefore apply the Euclidean distance transform for both inside and outside and concatenate them into one continuous field. We converted the entire first data set uh, into these distance maps and trained the network again. And we found a 36% less error in the pixel difference measurement while maintaining comparable performance on all other scales. Uh, the missing diagonal issue, uh, even if not continuous at first, with changing the threshold between solid and void, uh, they start to appear. And this can also be used to correct minor errors, minor errors in the area fraction, for example. How, if at all, uh, is the learned knowledge generalizable? We tested this question with wall openings uh, of different proportions. And the result showed that even though all have one central opening, uh, half the width and half the height, uh, we see that the resulting optimal topology is different. Uh, if a generative adversarial network would be able to learn this as well, uh, is yet to be seen. Now, is this creative? Uh, we cannot offload or delegate responsibility for being uh, creative to an artificial intelligence, but put into the hands of a creative person, it can be incredibly powerful and produce astonishing and surprising results. Uh, to benefit from it, we as designers have to understand its inner workings and constraints to see and harvest its potential. Is it intelligent? There is no time uh, here to explore all definitions of intelligence, but Topogan was able to learn and apply hard numerical constraints like the opening uh, constraints or the uh, area fraction without being explicitly programmed. Artificial intelligence uh, can therefore be a great co-designer and active partner in the design process. Uh, will it replace the designer? Uh, counter question, should it? Uh, Topogan may not invent original solutions itself, but it can uh, stimulate the architect's creativity. Uh, playing with the constraints uh, and discovering the consequences in real time allows for a different workflow. Uh, I don't think the goal can be to strive for an all-encompassing artificial general intelligence from concept sketch uh, to a building's operation and beyond, but it can already be very powerful and productive for well-defined tasks. Uh, Topogan is addressing a well-framed deterministic engineering problem. Given an input, uh, there is one and only one solution using traditional finite element analysis. And the machine learning model can therefore learn this. Uh, the case is different for other architectural questions like floor plan design. Given an input, for example, the number, size or function of, of rooms, uh, there are countless solutions. And this will be more difficult for uh, AIs to learn. Uh, I would like to thank you very much for your attention. Uh, please reach out to us if you have more questions.